17 wickets have gone so far. I mean, what have you made of today's play? How on earth do you sum that up? Well, I mean, it's compelling viewing. There's no doubt about that, as it always is when you play on a pitch that is not fit for Test cricket. And that's exactly what this one is. They were close. They fell close to the wind in the last Test match. Rohit Sharma and Ashwin got runs and people said, oh, no, it's fine. But that thing exploded on day one. Dust was coming out. It was turning excessively. And it's been the same today, albeit that, and yesterday even, the fact that no one then went on to get the 100, which sort of made it all right. Rohit Sharma played so well in that second Test match. So I just think that it's a great game to watch, but there's no way that this pitch is fit for Test match cricket. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, entertaining it is. And David Lloyd actually said that a bit earlier. He said, that, you know, this is not cricket, given the pitch. Do, do you agree with that? Should we even uh, be, you know, letting this go ahead? Well, it's fine. It's not dangerous, so no one's going to get hurt. But the fact is, it's pretty clear in the regulations on what a test pitch should be. And it gets rated poor. And then there should be repercussions. If there's one, if it's not a fair contest between bat and ball, and the second thing it says, and there's lots of different sort of subcategories to it, says if there's excessive movement, spin or seam, early on in the match. And this is day two, and it's behaving like a day eight pitch. Um, so people can say we're moaning because we're England fans, wanting them to do well, but this just doesn't step up, stack up against what you're meant to do to prepare a surface for test cricket. And it doesn't work as well when you just say, yeah, but it doesn't happen every week. Who cares whether it happens once <laughs> or a hundred times? It's about what you're allowed to do, what it should be, and you just go from there. Yeah, good point. What's the balance here then between performance and pitch? Well, look, I mean, it's pretty much a lottery if you're a batting side. Look, Joe Root got five for eight. I mean, we last week everyone said, yeah, but... English players need to learn how to play spin. Well, let me tell you then, the Indian batsmen need to learn how to play Joe Root, who is a part-time spinner on day two of a test match. You know, if we want to see cricket that lasts quickly and it's over and every ball's an event, either going out the park or getting a wicket, that's what T20 cricket's there for. That's what the hundred's going to be there for. This is test cricket. That first test match, it's like, oh, no, but that's boring when Joe Root gets 200 and then you win in five days. No, no, that's what the game's meant to be. You know, it doesn't have to be like that every week. This is too extreme. Mm. Uh, and when the dust settles after the test is over, focusing on Joe Root, do you think he'll be reminding his teammates constantly about his uh, bowling display? <laughs> yeah, I think he probably will. I mean, five for eight. It's not like Joe Root can get five for 50. But to only go for eight runs, I mean, that's better than Broadie's figures almost. It's just extraordinary and as well by some of the great players of the modern era. I mean, people like Rohit Sharma, Virat Kohli, Pajara, all these Indian batsmen. I know he didn't get all of them out, but he's got a load of people in his pocket that he can brag about for years. And this could be over. I mean, I've, I've just had a look at some of the stats. It could be the shortest test match uh, that these have been involved in since the uh, Second World War. Uh, yeah, and that is what happens, and this is the problem. This is the problem when you allow things that happened last week to go ahead because what you're basically saying if you don't do anything about this pitch then you can never do anything about surface unless it's dangerous now that's absolutely fine if you want to change the regulations if when every team comes over to England you just play on an absolute snake pit that's going everywhere and every test match lasts two days because you set a marker down when you don't do anything about a surface you set a marker down at any time there's a bad pitch or a pitch that's substandard in the future, they'll go, hang up, what about the third test, England-India? 112 all out, all that type of stuff. There's no way it's as bad as that. So you have to be very careful mm. what you wish for in test cricket. And just uh, finally, because I'm sure you probably want to be watching the action, um, what about the umpiring? That's been a bit of an issue. Uh, what do you think about all that? Yeah, I'm slightly less worried about the umpiring, I have to say. You can get good and bad decisions to go your way in cricket. Yeah, and the problem is, and we've seen this back here, with the elite panel umpires, even when they're trying to work out how to use the protocols and everything with the third umpire, how that all works, they get so much training for that that these guys, I don't think, have had the same because of COVID. So I've got more leniency to, towards the umpiring than I have the surface. Rob, thank you very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of this, if you can. <laughs> no problem.